Hey, what's up, everybody? If you hear any noise, <laughs> it's just this. Just ignore it. So, my name is Russ with rwgresearch.com, and today we're going to be doing a printer unboxing. Now, I get asked this a lot, and it is, Russ, what 3D printer should I buy? Now, for those of you who know my channel, you realize that I build everything, but I need a portable small printer something I can work with because this shop is 44 square foot that's tiny so this box behind me houses the entire 3d printer and I think it's already built auto bed leveling all the stuff let's find out if it's any good this is the ant e carry from gear best let's unbox it Shh. wait till we get to the unboxing are you ready to open this box? Are you ready? I'm ready! Let's do it! Let's see what kind of camera angle we got. Alright, let's see what's in the box. Alright, look at that. PLA. Cool, 1.75, one kilogram. Oh yeah. Take it away, Mountain Toy. Look at that. That's the whole thing right there. You okay, got a USB cord. Got ourselves the foreign power adapter. You can get the US version, but apparently I failed. Oh. And a scraper. Thanks, Malachi. All right, so look, let's put this thing. Get this out without getting the styrofoam all over it. Oh, look at this. All right, we'll put this over here. What's this? Spool holder. Looks like it's acrylic, but it's got the sticker on there, so it should be nice and shiny under there. Oh, and another box. What's this? We got ourselves a, ooh, multi-use flashcard reader. We got ourselves an extra hot end. That's awesome. We got ourselves a power brick. This guy is 24 volts, 4 amps. What else we got, Malachi? We got the, ooh, carbon fiber. Look at that. And 3D printed end caps for the sp uh, spool of filament. Glue stick. And we got the cap for this. Here you go. All right, let's clean up this mess and see what we actually got. Yeah, I think that's good. What do you think? All right, so we got it out of the box. Let's see if, yes! uh, very excited. Now we need to see if it's any good. Let's see if any parts are falling off or broken, because that's always important. All right, before I go any further, I've already noticed that everything is just really loose, probably from shipping. So you're going to need to just go over this with a fine tooth comb and just make sure things are actually the way they should be. And for any person that's never 3D printed before, that's going to be kind of hard to do. Um, but just use some common sense. The belts need to be tightened. Uh, stuff like this needs to be popped back on. And just give it a good overview. Uh, so far, that's my first impression. So at a quick look, it appears that the nozzle is got some plastic on it. So therefore, it's been tested. However, everything's a little nice! loose. And I think it needs to be adjusted. All right, welcome back. I've changed my clothes. It's actually two days later. I've had time to play with this thing and figure out if I like it, if I don't like it. Good things, bad things. We're going to talk about the bad things later. We're going to start out with the good things. So the question I wanted to know was, can you actually spend, you know, right around 250 bucks, less than $300, get a printer that a person that's never used a printer before, can they actually use this printer? The whole point of this machine is it's small, it's portable, and it's user friendly. Because most people who do not, you know, have never 3D printed anything will not be able to figure out 
a complex machine. And this has auto bed leveling. Right, so the whole nozzle moves to auto bed level. There are lots of instructions. Everything is on the SD card that comes with the machine. So you just grab this card, put it in your computer. It's got the instructions. It's got a warranty card. It's got all the software. It's got the firmware. Everything is on this card. You do not even need to download anything. So you can actually do this without internet if you want. Quick. This printer is fairly lightweight. You can just carry it around. Um, it's definitely a portable machine, which is what I needed. I need something small and portable. A motorcycle. A motorcycle. That's what you call ultra portability. Careful now. So this printer has actually really surprised me so far. For less than $300, you can purchase a printer it's 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter and that's basically a good size volume for any normal you know normal tasks that an individual would do um, the auto bed leveling feature is a really simple thing to use you just go in here set it let it do its thing and it's good to go and actually if you set up the slicer and everything correctly with the start G code and the end G code it would automatically do that you don't have to do anything except for just start your file. The only problems I've had is whenever the probe goes around to probe everything, sometimes there's a little extra plastic under here and it gets daubed onto the bed. And then when you run the routine again, it may not actually hit the bed all the way. Um, I haven't really had any issues with that, but I'm just saying you should watch out for that. Um, one of the things I really like about it is you can print from the SD card. You do not need to have this plugged in the computer. As a matter of fact, I haven't plugged it into the computer at all yet. Um, what I did was on here, there's a couple of settings for repeater host or repeater, however you say it. And you can just go ahead and install everything that's on this SD card. You don't even need the internet. It's all on here already for you. You can just go ahead and set that up and you can drag in the settings that are already on the SD card into the repeater host and it will automatically set up everything and it'll have all the little tweaks and settings in there. So what I did is I just took those settings and I put them into um, my other slicing programs. I've used K-Slicer and Simplified 3D and they both work fine. So the extruder on this guy is I believe what they call a bulldog and it seems to work just fine. On here there is a little set screw where you can tighten this and I had to adjust that a little bit tighter for my liking. Um, so it seems the extruded motor for a direct drive seems to work just fine. I'm used to a direct drive like this. Uh, the Bowden tube here is, is short enough that it's not a big worry. Um, I think it's just fine. It's not too long and it seems to do okay with retractions. So let's talk about the mechanical properties of this machine. So it's very straightforward. It's got a Z rail here. It's got three plastic extruded bearings on here. One on the top, one on the bottom, one right there in the front. Um, for the other axes, you've got a four roller system. And then the same thing on the bottom, there are four, hard to see, but there are four rollers inside here, one on each corner. This is very stable. This is very stable. And um, the whole thing's pretty good. Now, this whole entire thing is actually on a very thick piece of acrylic. Um, you can see in there it's something like 10 millimeter. I haven't measured it, but it looks at least 10. It could be 12 or even 15. It's pretty thick. Um, and so it's thick enough that when you add the other supports, these aluminum rails going the other way, there's there's just no way this thing is going to be like flexible. And then this piece is bonded to the base, so it, it gives it even more rigid support. And it's also even got a 
machined handle. This has actually been machined and iodized. Well, everything is black iodized. Uh, all the other pieces are aluminum. There is no 3D printed parts except for this housing, this wire cover, this is a bearing cover, and the fan shroud for the cooling fan. Everything else on this unit is either casted or extruded or machined. Everything on here is metal or acrylic, which is fantastic. All right, so I popped the acrylic cover off and just look inside here, you can see that all the wires are actually labeled, um, which is really, I'm surprised to be honest with you that they are labeled. So even if you do have problems, at least all the wires are labeled. Um, and each cable end has been marked, it appears. At least you can see the X on this one. So that's already great. It appears that the potentiometers have been turned and set accordingly to what they should be. Those, that's how you adjust the current. So it looks like somebody actually did, you know, run this through its its paces before they shipped it out, which is actually fantastic. So um, one thing that I've noticed about these slide rails is the the wheels don't quite fit perfectly in the channels, and that's okay, except they're actually starting to leave a little pieces of plastic here and there and I think what's gonna happen is they're gonna wear uh, to the angle a little bit better they're not quite perfect but I think that it's not gonna cause any problem whatsoever I don't see any issues so far and over time you may have to tighten these if they get slightly loose but that's not a big deal another thing to think about is if you wanted to add a heated bed to this you probably could but this base plate is acrylic so you probably need to use a piece of aluminum or something else besides what this is made out of in order to add yourself a heat bed you may need to raise it up or something but I believe the electronics are capable of doing that you might have to add something such as a control switch or solid state relay but I don't see a reason why you couldn't add a heated bed uh, with some manipulation of this printer uh, the fact that it comes with a nozzle and a hot um, a heater, heater cartridge and a thermistor. It's got a whole entire unit. So in case you have problems with yours or something happens, you have a whole new one here, which is actually really great. Um, and to have a full spool, one kilogram roll of filament is fantastic. So my first set of tests were to print all of these things. And these are basically layer height checks and dimensional checks. It's just a simple little piece, 50 millimeter tall. And what I did is just printed a bunch of these at different layer heights from 0 0.025 all the way up to three. So let's have a good close look at what these actually look like. And there's 0 0.025, you can see it's, it's a bit rough. It actually worked, but it does not really look amazing. It's just too, it's too much. Here's 0 0.05 and it looks, those layer heights look pretty good, but I think I think it's a little too much. Here's 0.075. This one actually looks pretty good, but there's you can see the layers in the other direction. These are all printed at 35 millimeters per second, so kind of fast. Here's a 0.1, which again looks pretty, pretty good. I can't complain about that. Here's a 0.125. Again, just fine. I mean, you almost can't see too much of the layer heights. 0.15, starting to see a little layers, but it still looks clean. 0.175, can see how nice it really looks good. 0.2, which is your kind of your standard, if you want to call it that, it looks fine as well. Of course, you can hear it. And then a 0.25, which did okay, but I think it was a little under extrusion in certain spots. And then point three, uh, maybe with tuning you could get this to work better, but you actually started getting holes in the print. So normally you don't go this high anyway. Point, point uh, two five here is about the norm for that anyway. After learning what kind of tolerances I can get on this machine, I decided to print out these very small frogs. So here are the frogs. On the far right here, we have the point two millimeter layer height. You can see on the legs how there's just the detail just sort of drops off. Looks like something you'd put together with layers of a puzzle. A little cardboard style. Alright, the middle here is 0.1. And you can see it's starting to look 
pretty good and actually I, I wouldn't recommend going past point one on this machine uh, like the overhang here you know obviously no support didn't support the bottom but uh, you can see on the legs how how it looks it's it's pretty darn good if you go any lower this is point oh five layer heights and uh, it's it actually started making it look worse in, in spots and you can see the side of this frog still looks pretty good and this one kinda looks actually kinda rough but look how look how smooth that is you almost can't hear it listen to that one and of course this one it's it's actually it's actually pretty incredible how smooth that 0.05 millimeter one is so I printed out some of the files that came on the SD card that were sliced from the manufacturer this little bear guy pretty sweet little print actually turned out really nice you can see how the quality is it's pretty darn good this was sliced on the printer uh, or on the SD card by the manufacturer uh, no support at all you can see the tail uh, was not supported so it kind of hung down but yeah you can see the details on the face um, I I can't complain that is a pretty nice looking print um, I was really surprised at how nice this it, and it feels solid even though it's like somewhere around I think 25% infill it's got five or six layers it's a really nice print and this little cup base thing actually turned out amazing this is the first thing I actually printed and I'll be darned if this thing just doesn't look beautiful. This was printed in vase mode, um, but this was something that the factory sliced. I did not slice this, and it really, really turned out gorgeous. The very bottom layers, you can actually see all the way through them, and I think that's just due to the fact that I adjusted the extruder pressure, and I think it was slipping a little bit, so I think that would make that more solid. All right, here is a QSN. Uh, my wife tripped the breaker and it didn't finish. But uh, it looks really bad, you know, on the inside. But on the outside, it actually looks pretty good. I can't complain too much for the machine it is. That's a hard thing to print, so it's not going to print perfectly. So I printed this red rocket and red vase just so we could get a little bit better visual of uh, what this thing can do. And yeah, this is like super impressive actually. This really turned out nice. You can see uh, see what it looks like through the light. You can see what it looks like through the light and uh, the layers are just so clean. They really look good. This was uh, this was done in 1.5 uh, millimeter layer heights. And you can see the tip didn't really turn out amazingly, but that's, uh, you know, just sometimes the way it is, even though it's got a part cooling fan. And here's the vase. Man, this thing turned out nice. And then this time the, the bottom was solid, so I'm pretty sure the, the other one was just due to the fact that um, I didn't quite have the extruder motor adjustment just right but yeah look at those curves I mean wowzers it is solid look how clean that is and the the funny lines that you see on the very top on the edge there these lines are actually the triangles of the mesh you're seeing that's what you see right there. This is uh, Matter Hacker's translucent red. It's a pretty good looking plastic. If we can get a better visual of the layers. It's just so clean. Really impressed. I am pretty sure this will hold water. I'm not even going to try it. I'm confident that it will hold water. So the yellow pieces that you see here on this printer, uh, on the SD card that this machine comes with, 
are the actual files. So I've actually printed out a black fan uh, channel for cooling the part as it's running. So th these are actually already on here, sliced, ready to go. So I do recommend you know printing some of these in case you break the ones that are on there. You've got them in stock, they're right on the card. Print it and go. Now this particular one, I actually sped it up up to 400% and it had a little bit of trouble there for a little bit. Um, so I slowed it down and I ended up running it at about 200%. Uh, while it was running at 100%, you can see how the plastic is a lot more glossy. Um, and then it got a little more dull as it was going faster. It did have a few uh, little spots where it had some trouble. So, you know, I was pushing it like probably past its maximum speed just to see what would happen. So definitely stay in with the boundaries. I believe uh, 80 millimeter max on this guy, millimeters per second. All right, it's that time. Let's talk about the bad stuff. So the worst thing that happened so far is that when I got this machine in from the shipping, um, it was completely banged up. It was falling apart. There were some pieces actually that fell completely off. And that actually is not the manufacturer's fault or the person's at GearBest. It's not their fault either. It's actually shipping. Now I talked to the GearBest people and they said if this happens, uh, they'll send a repair part if something's broken or they'll refund you the entire price or they'll send you a new printer and switch one out. So they're actually, you know, there was a warranty card on the SD uh, card that you can actually mail in so th from my understanding they'll take care of you if this happens to you however if this does happen to you um, and you want to keep the printer you want to work on it I highly recommend you just take a little bit of time and tighten everything up make sure everything's in good shape because this is a really well built printer in my opinion so in a separate video I'm gonna show you how I repaired this unit I'm not gonna do that in this video so if you want to see that subscribe to this channel and I'll be posting that in all right so if this printer uh, comes to you all nice and dandy and it's not beat up like mine was uh, I would still recommend going over everything and just tightening everything making sure there's no play in any of these accesses again watch the other video on how to adjust those things I'll post that soon if not already um, and so I just wanted to kind of tell you a few things I did not like about this printer first of all the buzzer is like extraordinarily loud okay chill out oh I didn't get it and so I just took a little paper towel and I shoved it in there and that's good enough for me for now um, the other thing I really did not like about this printer is this ribbon cable uh, it's a fine design, but I think because this unit is portable, you know, you're supposed to pick it up and carry it around. I imagine this is sort of the most fragile part of this. Um, I believe, you know, the rest of this unit, you could probably carry it in the wrong way and it's not going to really hurt it. But this, if this gets snagged, is going to rip. Um, and so either uh, put something around here or be careful. You might be able to find something like this uh, wire shroud that you could put around here to keep it from being ripped but that's really the worst part about this printer is this ribbon cable seems like it's a bit delicate i know these are tough but yeah, i think it'd be easy to rip especially if you if you picked it up and you just got it snagged on something i think it would rip um the other bad things about this printer is I don't really know of many other bad things. To be completely honest, I've had a really awesome time using this in the last couple of days, and I'm probably going to use this a lot more. So one of the other things that I do not like about this machine is it does not come with a power switch, so therefore you have to unplug it every time you want to turn it off. Um, implementing a power switch would be really easy, and I think that uh, the manufacturer should do that because that's just something that you should do. Um, it does come with a scraper, however, it does not have a sharp edge on it, so you're going to want to make this sharp. Uh, having a blunt edge is not going to help you very much. Um, the, the stand for the filament, if I don't break it. This base, which is acrylic, you can peel this off and it'd probably look nice and shiny. Uh, it wants to walk its way around the bench and get tangled up. If you 3D print yourself some housings to keep this in the center, that would be beneficial. I actually clamped it to the table. Um, and so just one more thing to think about. This uh, needs a little bit more work. Don't trust it. Don't walk away from it unless it's clamped down or physically attached to something. 
I think it might actually be a good idea to make a little bracket and mount it up here somewhere. So I'll probably do that eventually. All right, so I hope you guys like this review. Don't forget um, the next video or sometime soon I'm going to be posting repair video on this guy that I had to do when I first got it. Now, I really hope that doesn't happen to you, but if it does, like I said, gear best and the manufacturer should take care of it uh, according to my communication to them. So you just need to communicate to that to them. But honestly, there was nothing physically broken here and it just took a little bit of time to tighten everything and get it going. So that's really the biggest complaint I have with shipping and that's not really anyone's fault except for the shipping company. Now as far as the printer itself, it's easy to use. The auto level feature is really amazing. I actually took this on my motorcycle, drove it all the way up to work, used it for the day, drove it all the way back. That's a pretty portable unit if I can strap it onto my motorcycle. So uh, I highly recommend this product even for a beginner. If you are absolutely not mechanical minded and you can't understand any programming things, um, I think the instructions are clear enough to get you through. There's a really nice video where you can go and watch the video. It shows you how to use it, how to set it up. There's no audio with that, but there, there it is in English or um, even a few other languages. So I highly recommend uh, trying this printer out if it's your first time printer if you want to go for it. Um, I'll be recommending this to a lot of people. Uh, the only thing is that it doesn't have a huge uh, build volume, 150 millimeter cubed um, or square. All right, Russ out. Peace to you guys. Have a good day. God bless. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this review video. And uh, if you want to see me do more reviews in the future, let me know down in the comments. We'll see you later. <laughs> I'm back. Remember what I said? Will it hold water? We're gonna try it. We're on the plane. Let's see if it'll hold water. I don't think it's gonna leak. I think I could drink out of this thing. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah. This is beautiful. Oh. I only got enough. I only got one hand. <laughs> Yep. I don't think it's leaking. I'll set it there and go to the bathroom and then uh, we'll see if it's leaking. All right, the moment of truth. Oh yeah. Not a single leak. Beautiful. As I suspected. Watertight, that's amazing. It's a single layer. Looks really cool. Solid. Bye-bye.